Hi, I'm Jude from HeadFi.org. Today we're going to talk about CanJam New York 2018, which is happening again in Times Square at the New York Marriott Marquis Hotel on February 17th and 18th. With CanJam New York, we begin the 2018 CanJam Global Schedule, and it has expanded this year. So before we get to the Big Apple, let's look at all the other CanJam events in 2018 so you can mark your calendars and book your travel. On March 24th and March 25th, CanJam Singapore will once again take place at the Pan Pacific Hotel in Marina Square. If you were there in previous years, believe it or not, there are even more exhibitors this year. On April 7th and April 8th, CanJam SoCal returns to the JW Marriott Los Angeles LA Live in the heart of downtown Los Angeles with so much to do within a short walk in any direction. On July 21st and July 22nd, CanJam London returns to central London at the Park Plaza Westminster Bridge Hotel. I love this location. Right off Westminster Bridge, my hotel room had a view of Big Ben last year. On October 5th through October 7th, CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest will return for the 10th year in a row at the Rocky Mountain Audio Fest in Denver, Colorado. This is a unique show because the world's best two-channel audio gear is also just a walk away from the world's best headphone audio gear at CanJam. And finally, on November 3rd and November 4th, we added China to the CanJam global schedule. We're going to Shanghai, with the show being held at the Shanghai Marriott Hotel City Center, located in the heart of downtown Shanghai. With so many head fires from China and the surrounding regions, I think this one's going to be huge, so please be sure to join us. But now, let's get back to the Big Apple, to CanJam New York 2018, and show you just a sampling of the world's newest and the world's best headphone audio gear, all in one place, February 17th and 18th in Times Square. Campfire Audio and ALO Audio will be at CanJam New York. They are sister companies, so they will be exhibiting together. The big news from them is this just-announced Campfire Audio Cascade, a portable, closed-back, over-ear headphone that you'll be able to audition at CanJam New York. The Campfire Audio Cascade was designed to be an audiophile-quality, on-the-go headphone for those who prefer a richer, meatier sound with a bass-emphasized spectral tilt. And that kind of sound signature is often what I seek when I'm on the go. Frankly, sometimes it's also the kind of signature I seek when I'm not on the go and I'm just in the mood for that sense of physicality with my music. As with their very popular flagship IEM, the Campfire Audio Vega, which we did a HeadFi TV episode about, it's not all about the bass with the Cascade. As they do with the Vega, Campfire was able to extract excellent resolution and control from the Cascade's custom 42mm beryllium coated drivers throughout the audio band. Treble detail is very good, shimmering without glare to my ears. Simply put, if you love the sound of the Campfire Audio Vega in-ear monitors, you're probably going to find the Campfire Audio Cascade a worthy over-ear counterpart. The Cascade scales well, too. It's sensitive enough that I can and do drive it directly from my iPhone in a pinch. Feed it from the iFi Micro IDSD Black Label, Chord Hugo 2 or Chord Dave, and the resolution scales, and the image opens up. At its best, the Cascade throws a remarkably open-sounding, wide image for a closed-back headphone, which I think will be considered by many one of its most enchanting traits. The Cascade is also built well, hewn from forged and machined aluminum and stainless steel. Its sheepskin over-the-ear ear pads also isolate very well, and they're very, very comfortable for their size. The Cascade is a must-hear new headphone, so don't miss it at Campfire Audio's exhibit. Of course, Campfire Audio will also have its very popular line of universal fit in-ear monitors, some of the best-reviewed IEMs in our community. Look for the new Campfire Audio Polaris in-ear monitors there, as well as the Orion, Lyra 2, Jupiter, Dorado, Andromeda, and of course the Vega. Also make sure to check out the ALO Audio line of headphone electronics and cables at their exhibit at CanJam New York 2018. 64 Audio will be at CanJam New York, and while I haven't heard the production versions of their latest in-ears, like the Tia Trio or the U12T, I have been listening to their flagship Universal Fit 64 Audio Tia Forte quite a lot. This Tia Forte has to be one of the two or three best in-ear monitors I've ever heard. Now the Tia Forte uses 64 Audio's Tia drivers, which are quite unique. Tia, TIA stands for tubeless in-ear audio. With TIA, what 64 Audio is doing is opening up the enclosure of the balanced armature to expose the diaphragm. This allows the diaphragm to directly radiate unobstructed. Now each driver is also in an acoustic chamber that's matched to it, and among other benefits, these tune the drivers without introducing unwanted resonances. The Tia Forte uses three of these Tia type drivers, one for the highs, one for the high mids, and another for the mids. Now along with these is an electrodynamic low frequency driver. Again, together, these form one of the very best universal fit in-ears I've yet heard at any price. Now the sound is rich in tone and detail, and the imaging is big and very cohesive. The Tia Forte is a very special IEM, so if you haven't heard it, and if you're in the market for a flagship IEM, make sure you hear the 64 Audio Tia Forte at CanJam New York. Again, 64 Audio also recently announced three new Tia driver models, two universals, the U12T and the Tia Trio, and a new custom fit model called the A12T. 
As IEMs go, these are at the top of my list to hear at CanJam New York. I have to find out how much of the Tia Forte's magic they've been able to pass on to its new Tia siblings. Keep in mind also that 64 Audio has a broad family of other in-ear monitors, both universal and custom, so make sure to stop by their exhibit. But again, if you want to hear what I think is one of the best sounding IEMs at any price, stop by and listen to this one, the 64 Audio Tia Forte. Mr. Speakers will be at CanJam New York, and that should come as no surprise to anyone. Mr. Speakers exhibits at just about every single CanJam and HeadFi meet they can get to. Now at CanJam New York, Mr. Speakers is going to be showing their brand new electrostatic headphone, the Mr. Speakers Voce. Now while Mr. Speakers is obviously known for their work on planar magnetic headphones, Mr. Speakers founder Dan Clark, he's always also appreciated the even higher level of performance that exceptional electrostatic headphones are capable of. He and his team have been working on the development of this electrostatic headphone for quite some time. You simply cannot rush to market something as precise, something as delicate as a flagship type electrostatic headphone, and that's just what the Voce is. Now speaking to the type of precision necessary to build a headphone like this, Mr. Speakers even had to create a clean room environment at their headquarters to build the Voce. Now, as you can see, the Voce's chassis is functionally driven. It's actually quite intricate, and really, it's quite beautiful to look at. This chassis is crafted of machined aluminum. Now, the huge 88mm drivers, they are fully sealed to increase reliability, and the diaphragms are 2.4 microns thick. We'll reveal more detail about the Voce in a future episode of HeadFi TV, in which we'll also talk with Dan Clark about it. How does the Mr. Speaker's Voce sound, and is it in league with the likes of Stax? Yes, it is. Its signature is definitely on the neutral side, more so than my two favorite Stax headphones, the SR007 Mark II and the SR009. The Voce is less bright, less incisive than my Stax SR009, yet also not as warm as the Stax SR007 Mark II. Bass extends deep, and treble extension and presence is clear and silky sounding. Again, this is a very neutrally voiced headphone to my ears, so its mid-band sounds linear, resolving, neither recessed nor forward. The Voce is a headphone that would be equally comfortable in a studio for mixing or at home for just general listening. The best I've ever heard the Voce sound is through this gorgeous amp you're looking at here. This is a custom 845 directly heated electrostatic headphone amplifier designed and built by Frank Cooter. It's the best sounding amp we have here for all of our Stax headphones and now also the Mr. Speaker's Voce. Driven by this amp, all of these headphones take on added warmth, body and harmonic richness, and all, including the Voce, benefit from being powered by this custom 845. Whether you're a veteran electrostatic headphone enthusiast or someone who's never heard the magic of an excellent electrostat, the new Mr. Speaker's Voce should not be missed at CanJam. Of course, the planar magnetic headphones that Mr. Speaker's is so wildly popular for in our community will also be on display, including the Aeon and Ether families of planar magnetic headphones. Sennheiser will be exhibiting at CanJam New York, and they've got some new products you'll definitely want to hear. Let's start with the most obvious one that just about everyone's going to stop by their exhibit for. I'm talking about their upcoming closed back reference class flagship headphone, the Sennheiser HD820. Now, we had a prototype of the HD820 here at HeadFi HQ for a while last year, and talk about unique engineering and design. Rather than use traditional dampening behind the drivers, Sennheiser engineered Gorilla Glass concave reflectors. These direct the reflected sound to acoustic absorbers on the perimeter of the ear cup, and that's just one of the innovations. Sennheiser's Axel Grell is giving a talk at CanJam New York detailing much more of the design and voicing of the HD820, so don't miss that talk, and definitely don't miss your chance to hear the HD820 at their exhibit. Now I imagine Sennheiser will be driving the HD820 and also the HD800 and the HD800S with the new Sennheiser HDV820 desktop DAC amp. Now the Sennheiser HDV820 is one of my favorite solid state amps with which to drive the HD800 and the HD800S, and I expect it'll be the same for the HD820. The HDV820 seems to be purpose built for driving high impedance headphones, and it'll be the first amp that I plug the new closed back HD820 into upon its arrival. Also at Sennheiser's exhibit, make sure to hear the new Sennheiser IE800S in-ear monitors. The single driver electrodynamic IE800S is a refinement of the popular IE800, and the refinements to its sound versus its predecessor make it a more urbane, polished in-ear monitor. I think this was needed in an increasingly competitive and innovative field of high-end universal fit IEMs. The IE800S is a more sophisticated sounding piece, and it also comes better equipped. The i800S comes with a cable configuration that allows you to choose from three different connectors, a standard 3.5mm unbalanced plug, a 2.5mm balanced plug, and the new Pentacon 4.4mm balanced plug. 
I really like the Pentacon connector and I hope it becomes the new desktop and portable bounce connection standard for headphones. Now most of the time I actually keep the i800S with its Pentacon connector in a small carrying case with the Sony and WWM1Z Walkman. Sennheiser will also have the new Sennheiser HD 660S. The HD 660S replaces the legendary Sennheiser HD 650. The HD 660S is more efficient and it also has a nominal impedance of only 150 ohms versus the HD 650's 300 ohm nominal impedance. Now given that it's easier to drive, I've found that finding rewarding device pairings with the HD 660S, it's quite a bit easier than it has been with the HD 600 family of headphones previously. Portable digital audio players, my Cord Hugo 2, these have no problem coaxing outstanding high-end performance from the HD 660S. Now aside from efficiency, I also prefer the HD 660S's sound signature. I find it more resolving, more refined than the HD 600 family headphones that came before it. Sennheiser will also bring to CanJam New York the best sounding headphone I have ever heard. Of course, I'm talking about the Sennheiser HE1, the successor to Sennheiser's legendary Orpheus system. Listening sessions with the HE1 are by appointment only, and I think at the time of the shooting, almost all of the slots are taken. So make sure to check the CanJam thread to see if there are any reservation slots left over. If there are, grab one now, because the HE1 is truly an incredible music listening experience. One of the exhibits that's practically a one-stop audio show of its own is the FIO exhibit because they have such a broad family of audio products. And FIO is increasingly challenging the state-of-the-art price no object gear, yet still not wavering from their mission to do so at more accessible, more affordable prices. Now one of the coolest new products from FIO is this. This is the new FIO Q5 flagship Bluetooth and DSD capable DAC and amplifier. Because I'm frequently on the go, anything that gives me more options for better portable hi-fi is of great interest to me. And a portable DAC amp combo that lets me feed it via analog line in or digitally from USB, optical, coax, lightning, WM port, or Bluetooth Bluetooth with Aptex and AAC, that is truly usable flexibility on the go. By the way, for Bluetooth, FIO bypasses the Bluetooth chip's own DAC. Instead, they pass the digital Bluetooth audio signal directly to the AK4490EN DACs through the XMOS chip for better performance. Also, the Q5 can decode PCM up to 32384 and DSD up to DSD256. As an iPhone user, I really love that the Q5 is MFI certified for use with iDevices and comes with a lightning to micro USB cable. So with the Q5, I can still easily and elegantly use my wired headphones with my late model iPhone with something better than these Apple headphone dongles. The Q5 also supports Walkman's WM port, which lets me breathe new life into old Walkmans or even just provide a different DAC option for current Walkmans. FIO's ability to squeeze high levels of sophisticated audio engineering into affordably priced portable audio gear is currently unparalleled. For example, in the Q5, the DAC, the lineout, the volume control, the low pass filter, amplifier, XMOS, and Bluetooth sections each have their own power supply circuits for cleaner power and less interference. Again, FIO's attention to detail at these prices is currently without equal, in my opinion. The FIO Q5 has an interchangeable amp module design that's compatible with the X7 digital audio player's amp modules. It comes with the excellent AM3A module with both single-ended and balanced outputs, and it can output up to 400 milliwatts into 32 ohms. Battery life is estimated at over 25 hours with analog in, or over 10 hours using the digital inputs. Of course, in addition to the new Q5, FIO will also have their full line of products at their exhibit, including their flagship challenging portable digital audio players and a growing family of IEMs. Now, at CES last month, I visited FIO's exhibit, and there I focused on their in-ear monitors, which I haven't really given as much time to as their electronics. I didn't fully realize until then just how competitive they've gotten in the IEM world. Now, I was thoroughly impressed by their F9 family of IEMs, and it's no surprise to me why Knowles themselves are promoting their partnership with FIO. I also heard the FIO FH1 IEM for the first first time, also outstanding and even more affordable. Anyway, definitely make sure to stop by Theo's exhibit at CanJam New York and make sure to budget a lot of time to check everything out. Deconi Audio is going to be at CanJam New York and theirs is going to be one of the most fun exhibits to stop at. Bring your own headphones and earphones to their exhibit. Why? Because Deconi manufactures premium replacement ear pads for many models of headphones that may improve your headphones comfort and can also improve the sound of your headphones. Ear pad changing is the kind of headphone modification I most like to do. I'm talking about the kind of mod that doesn't require me to put a screwdriver to my headphones. It's an easy, quick installation, and some of the effects can be dramatic, again, both in terms of fit, comfort, and sound. Now, we just ordered a heap of Deconi ear pads for several of the headphones we have here. All seem to be, so far, of very high quality construction. They just arrived, though, so we only just started experimenting with them. We're having fun, though, and I'm going to have to follow up on the forums with some of our favorite combos, including sonic impressions and measurements to show their effects on frequency response. 
At CanJam New York, you can take your headphones to Deconi Audio's exhibit and try different Deconi ear pads on them. You'll be able to hear the differences for yourself, and you'll even be able to do before and after measurements, as Deconi Audio will have a measurement apparatus there for that. Now, make sure to go to Deconi's website at DeconiAudio.com to see if they have ear pads that fit your favorite headphones. Deconi Audio also makes replacement ear tips that fit many different models of IEM, so check for those too. If you don't feel like bringing your own headphones to CanJam, Deconi Audio will have plenty of headphones on hand for you to try with their ear pads at their exhibit. Deconi Audio will also have their new headphone, the Deconi Audio Blue, at their exhibit. The Deconi Audio Blue is a Fostex Deconi collaboration. Fostex and Deconi teamed up to create a custom variant of the Fostex T50RP Mark III. It's equipped with Deconi's hybrid ear pads and other changes, and Deconi and Fostex retuned the T50RP Mark III with a smoother sound and with more extended bass. I'm a fan of the Fostex T50RP Mark III, but there's no doubt that the Deconi Audio Blue has a sound signature that's more in line with my general sonic preferences. It's like Fostex and Deconi did the mods for me, thank you very much. Make sure to hear the Deconi Audio Blue at CanJam New York. Abyss headphones will be at CanJam New York and they'll have the updated version of their AB1266 called the AB1266 Phi. Now if you ask me to name what I think are the best sounding headphones in the world regardless of price, the AB1266 Phi driven well would certainly rank among them. The Abyss AB1266 Phi maintains the original AB1266's unique magnetic assembly. It has a single precisely slotted magnet per side as opposed to the multiple bar magnets used in other planar magnetic headphones. Now everything about this headphone is extreme, but it's all in service of the sound. Inside the AB1266 Phi, for example, you'll see black foam. That's actually foamed aluminum. Abyss puts the magnet on the ear side to prevent back reflections, and that foamed aluminum allows the sound to escape from the back while protecting the driver. It diffuses the upper frequencies and has some damping for the lows. Other than that, the carefully engineered driver requires no further damping. The AB1266 Phi is one of the most visceral, most physical sounding headphones we have here, and it does this with a more deft, delicate touch than the original AB1266. At the last Tokyo Headphone Festival, other than the Sennheiser HE1, the AB1266 Phi, driven by the iFi Audio Pro iCan in its tube plus mode, was the best sounding system I heard at that show. Abyss headphones will also finally have their production version planar magnetic Diana headphones available to listen to, and I absolutely treasure this new Diana. Why? Well, it's lightweight, it has a more normal form factor, because as much as I love the AB1266 Phi, its rather extreme form factor makes it a headphone I can't easily bring with me places. But the Diana, I can bring with me places and I can travel with it. Take everything I just said about the AB1266 Phi, but imagine it in a more compact package and with understandably less visceral impact, and you have the magical Diana. Keep in mind I said more normal, because the Diana still has a relatively unusual design. So make sure you let the staff at Abyss's CanJam exhibit help you make sure you have a good fit. When you do have a good fit, then you press play and let me know what you think. I imagine Abyss will be driving their AB1266 Phi's and Diana's with the Formula S headphone amp by 11 Audio with my tech DAX to source them. When you hear the Formula S amp, you may think it's a tube amp, but you won't find any tubes in it because it's a full Class A solid state design that'll output 2.1 watts into 46 ohms. The Formula S is a beautifully smooth sounding amp, rich in tone, which is why you might mistake it for a tube amp. They'll also be showing a brand new, fully balanced, full Class A battery powered amp by 11 Audio called the Broadway. I haven't heard that yet, but I will in New York. Definitely make it a point to stop by Abyss's exhibit to hear the AB1266 Phi, the Diana, and the Amps by 11 Audio at CanJam New York. Sonoma Acoustics will be at CanJam New York, and they'll be showing their Sonoma Model 1 electrostatic headphone system in the Schubert Room. That's a quieter listening area directly next to the main Broadway exhibit area. Now, the team behind Sonoma Acoustics Model 1 includes some of the key guys behind DSD as a high-resolution format. These are also the guys behind the Sonoma Digital Audio Workstation that has been used to record thousands of SACD titles. It shouldn't be surprising, then, that the target sound signature for the Model 1 was a more neutral studio reference, and to my ears, they achieved this. The Model 1 is an electrostatic headphone system comprised of a combination DAC ADC electrostatic amp unit and the companion electrostatic headphone. They cannot be separated. The amp will drive no other headphones. The headphones will be driven by no other amp. Again, a system. And what I like about this system is that it's become one of my neutral reference systems, again, voiced to be similar to the team's studio standards. I love having the Sonic Palette Cleanser Neutrality on tap whenever I want it, and when I want to season a taste, I love how well the Model 1 system responds to equalization. The Sonoma Acoustics Model 1 system is a great option for those who want to get into electrostatic headphones and who want to be able to do it with the easy choices that come automatically with a system solution like this. Definitely stop by Sonoma Acoustics exhibit in the Schubert room to hear their Model 1 system in a quieter exhibit area at CanJam New York. 
At Can Jam New York, Odyssey will have their full line of headphones, but I wanted to focus on a few new highlights. Odyssey just recently announced the Odyssey iSign LX semi-open full-range planar magnetic IEMs. If you've heard the iSign 10, then you'll know what to expect from the iSign LX as it sounds very similar. And that sound is that of a full-size planar magnetic headphone that just happens to be pocketable. The iSign LX does come housed in a slightly different chassis though, with a bold white perforated grill. It's also priced at only $199, which is actually quite incredible given the level of performance. Another new headphone from Odyssey is the Odyssey LCD2 Classic, also called the LCD2C. The Odyssey LCD2C is a reinvention of Odyssey's original 2009 era LCD2, including its warmer signature. Just like the original Odyssey LCD2, the new LCD2C is a return to a time before Odyssey started incorporating the phaser waveguide. We don't yet have the LCD2C at HeadFi HQ, so I'm going to make that the first headphone I listen to at Odyssey's exhibit. Last autumn at Can Jam at RMAF, Odyssey debuted the new LCD MX4. To me, this headphone is super compelling. It's a headphone that draws on much of the technology and design of the flagship LCD4, but in a much lighter weight chassis and with some changes to the driver that result in much greater drive efficiency. It's like an LCD4 variant built for use in studios and other settings where you're not likely to have a powerful high-end headphone amp available as required by the much less sensitive sibling, the LCD4. Now this is a headphone that is equally suited for general audiophile listening or for studio mixing sessions. Make sure to visit Odyssey's exhibit at CanJam New York to check out the new iSign LX, the LCD2C, the LCD MX4, and the rest of the Odyssey line. For CanJam New York this year, there are a total of only five seminar sessions over the two days, and none of them are repeated. Also, seating is limited, so plan your schedule accordingly so that you don't miss the seminars you want to see. And there are some outstanding sessions at this year's CanJam New York. On Saturday, February 17th, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., Rob Watts of Cord Electronics will be giving a talk about going beyond off-the-shelf DAC chips when designing DACs. This talk will include discussion of digital filters and their effects on sound quality, as well as the importance of timing from a perceptual point of view and how one can create the audibly perfect filter. Now, if you're a fan of Cord Electronics DACs, or you're simply interested in them, or DAC design in general, you don't want to miss this seminar. From 2.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. on Saturday, February 17th, we'll have a discussion panel about audio measurements with audio engineers. On the panel will be Axel Grell of Sennheiser, Rob Watts of Cord Electronics, Paul Barton of PSB, and Dan Foley of Audio Precision and Alma International. I'll be moderating this discussion with these engineers, all of whom use audio measurements as part of their day-to-day -day work lives. We'll discuss their feelings and findings about audio measurements, including discussion of what audio measurements can and cannot tell us. Also on Saturday, February 17th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., we'll explore the science and art of voicing headphones with Paul Barton of PSB. In this session, Paul will talk about how understanding the frequency response of headphones in relation to how loudspeakers behave in listening rooms is critical to his research on headphone voicing. Now, while discussing target headphone curves, Paul will compare his research and findings that led to PSB's room feel technology. He'll compare that to other work like the research of Harman's lead acoustic researcher, Sean Olive. He'll also discuss the results of blind listening tests at the National Research Council in Canada, the NRC, that Joe and I were very privileged to participate in. On Sunday, February 18th from 12.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m., Rob Watts from Cord Electronics returns to discuss this massive hit of a product, that's the Cord Electronics Hugo 2. Now portable or not, the Hugo 2 is one of my reference stacks, and this is also true for many other head fires. Rob Watts will discuss the design and technology contained within the Hugo 2 and its desktop counterpart, the new Cord Electronics Cutis DAC. Measurements of the technical performance of these DACs will be shown, and Rob will also cover Cord's Blue Mark 2 M scaler with its million tap filter. And from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. on Sunday, February 18th, Axel Grell from Sennheiser, one of the key figures behind so many headphones this community reveres, including the HD600 and 650, the HD800 and the HD800S, and many more, Axel's going to discuss the development and voicing of their upcoming Sennheiser HD820 closed-back flagship headphone. Now, closed-back reference class flagship headphones are not a dime a dozen. When Sennheiser decided to develop one, they innovated new technologies including concave glass reflectors, acoustic absorbers, and more, with the goal of crafting the most transparent sounding closed back headphone in the world. Now Axel Grell will discuss the development and acoustics of the new Sennheiser HD820. Again, these seminars are only happening once each at CanJam New York and seating space is limited, so plan your schedule accordingly and make sure not to miss any of these. iFi Audio will be exhibiting at CanJam New York and they'll be showing a DAC amp combo that can decode PCM up to 32768, DXD and DSD up to DSD 512. Its amp section delivers up to 4,000 milliwatts into 16 ohms, yet it's quiet enough that you can use even the most sensitive IEMs with it. Now, you might think I'm talking about something that looks like this. I'm not, but we will get back to this one in a moment. 
What I'm talking about is this. This is the iFi Audio Micro IDSD Black Label Portable DAC Amp Combo. This is an immensely capable piece, and it's no wonder it's as popular in our community as it is capable. Now, I've only had time here to scratch the surface. There's a lot more I could say about it. At its price, though, the Micro IDSD Black Label is simply superb. Now, everything I said about the iFi Micro IDSD Black Label is also true of its larger desktop sibling. This is the iFi Audio Pro iCan. It's the audio reviewer's dream amp. From the most sensitive in ears to my hardest to drive headphones with its 14,000 milliwatts of max output, it drives them all and it does it beautifully. Its two individual solid state and tube amplification sections give this amp three distinct characters solid state, tube and a mode they call Tube Plus, Tube Plus being my favorite mode. In fact, at the Tokyo Headphone Festival last fall, this amp in its Tube Plus mode, driving the Abyss AB1266-5 was the best sounding rig I heard at the show. Well, aside from the Sennheiser HE1. This is the single most versatile amp we have here at HeadFi HQ, and this is an office full of amps. iFi Audio will also be showing the DAC they were sourcing that system in Japan with, which is their upcoming flagship Pro IDSD DAC. This DAC supports PCM up to 32768 and DSD up to DSD 1024. It has selectable tube or solid state analog stages. It also supports MQA and has link play high res Wi Fi network playback. Frankly, I don't know a whole lot else about the Pro IDSD DAC yet, but I intend to listen to it again in New York. Anyway, check out the iFi Audio Micro IDSD Black Label, the Pro iCAN, the Pro IDSD DAC, and the entire iFi Audio line at CanJam New York. Meza Audio is coming to CanJam New York with a very exciting upcoming flagship planar magnetic headphone called the Empyrean. Meza Audio has co-developed the upcoming Empyrean with a company called Renaro. You probably haven't heard of Renaro, but let me explain briefly who they are and why I'm excited about the collaboration. Renaro is a team of researchers and engineers that have been working on planar magnetic development since the 1980s. They were started as a state-funded initiative in the former USSR, and they've worked on loudspeakers for the home, speaker drivers for car audio, and headphones. Renaro also produces the diaphragms on-site at their headquarters in Lviv, Ukraine. They've co-developed products many of you have heard of, but that I don't think I'm supposed to specifically mention. I first met Pavel Shimanovich from Renaro almost three years ago. We've had several meetings where he showed me prototypes of headphones and drivers that they'd been working on. Their designs, as far as I could tell, were quite novel, most noticeably their diaphragm trace patterns, usually unlike any that I'd seen before them. Now, we've also had Renaro prototypes come through HeadFi HQ here, and so this Empyrean that they've co-developed with Meza Audio is, for me, a very exciting thing to see come to fruition. Antonio Meza and his team at Meza Audio are some of my favorite people in the industry. They're passionate, they put it all on the line for this industry, and they've developed and released gorgeous sounding and gorgeous looking products like the Meza 99 Classic and the 99 Neo, both of which are also quite affordable. Now, in a decision to release a product that is significantly upmarket from their current lines, I believe the Imperian's price will be over $3,000, bringing in Renaro to co-develop was, in my opinion, a fantastic idea. Not surprisingly, the Meza Audio Empyrean does have a unique trace pattern on its diaphragms, and I don't recall seeing this exact pattern before. They're calling it an isodynamic hybrid array headphone. The traces are divided into two distinct coil patterns. One is a spiral coil concentrated over the ear canal opening. This spiral coil is more efficient at reproducing mid-band and high frequencies. Positioned physically above that, covering the upper part of the diaphragm, is a switchback coil pattern that's more efficient at producing lower frequencies. The ear pad mounting mechanism is also unique, and it actually has function beyond simply mounting the ear pad. This isomagnetic ear pad attachment also improves the efficiency of the driver by 12%, and it does this by targeting the magnetic field back into the driver. As you can see, once again, Meza Audio has designed a beautiful headphone. The Empyrean is a striking design. The grills look like something crafted for royalty. The aluminum chassis is sculpted using CNC, and the headband is carbon fiber with a very soft leather comfort strap. For this type and size of headphone, the weight is also very reasonable, coming in at under 400 grams. This pre-production Meza Audio Empyrean we have here sounds very impressive. Resolving, smooth, extended at both ends. Meza will have the latest pre-production voicing at CanJam New York, which I haven't heard yet, so I'll be rushing over there, same as you, to hear the latest voicing of the Empyrean. They really want your feedback at the show, so make sure to stop by Meza Audio's exhibit to hear the Empyrean, as well as the rest of Meza Audio's line. Hi-Fi Man will be at CanJam New York, and as always, you can expect that they'll have their complete line of products at the show for you to listen to. Two exciting and very new products they'll have for you to audition at CanJam will be the new Shangri-La Junior electrostatic headphone system and their latest affordable planar magnetic headphone, the Hi-Fi Man Sundara. Now, I briefly saw the Hi-Fi Man Shangri-La Junior electrostatic system at CES last month. It was, in my opinion, 
the best looking product that Hi-Fi Man has ever produced. Like its big Shangri-La sibling, the Shangri-La Junior system consists of both an electrostatic headphone and a companion electrostatic headphone amplifier. Now unfortunately, the Shangri-La Junior headphone prototype they had at the show was acting up, so I couldn't hear the system properly at the time. Just to get a taste though, I plugged the big Shangri-La's headphone into the Shangri-La Junior's amp, and the Junior's amp drove it impressively. I definitely have to hear the Shangri-La Junior system at CanJam, and make sure you do too. The other big news from Hi-Fi Man at the show is the new affordable Hi-Fi Man Sundara planar magnetic headphone. Priced at only $499, the Sundara elevates Hi-Fi Man's entry-level planar magnetic game. Now for the Sundara, Hi-Fi Man developed a new diaphragm that's 80% thinner than the HE400 series before it. They described the resulting sound versus the HE400 as more lush and detailed. I think that's a fair assessment. I should also mention that it's efficient enough to drive from my portable devices, and that's always a plus in my opinion. Now, the Sundara arrived at HeadFi HQ just a day or two ago, but my first impression is very strong. Off the top of my head here, I'm struggling to think of a better value for the dollar headphone from Hi-Fi Man, not just now, but ever. Now, make sure to hear the new Hi-Fi Man Shangri-La Junior, the Sundara, and the rest of the Hi-Fi Man product line at CanJam New York 2018. This is the Cord Electronics Hugo 2, and it's the best-sounding portable DAC amp I've yet heard. It also happens to be the best measuring portable DAC amp combo I've ever measured. This is the Cord Electronics Dave. The Dave is quite simply the best sounding DAC of any form factor I've ever heard, and it's the best measuring DAC of any type I've ever measured. In my opinion, Cord Electronics and designer Rob Watts have clearly got this DAC thing nailed down. Yes, the Dave is better than the Hugo 2, but the Hugo 2 brings enough of what makes the Dave so otherworldly good that it's become my main source component. It can come with me anywhere, and it pretty much does go with me everywhere. Now, I'm going to shoot a dedicated HeadFi TV episode about this Hugo 2 at some point after CanJam New York because it's just too special, too good not to. Of course, Cord Electronics will have the Hugo 2 at their exhibit at CanJam New York. If you don't already own one, and a lot of you already do, you must audition the Hugo 2 there. At their exhibit, make sure to also plug into the Dave. And if they have the Dave hooked up to the Million Tap Blue Mark 2M scaler, that's something else you have to hear. We don't have the Blue Mark 2 here yet, but I've heard it several times, and it's very next level, especially in terms of its imaging, which is practically holographic. In addition to the Hugo 2 and Dave, Cord Electronics will also be showing their Mojo portable DAC amp with Poly. The Poly is a companion piece for the Mojo. It enables the Mojo as a fully-fledged, high-resolution wireless network music player, streamer, and SD card playback device, and with wireless playback and control from smartphones. For the Poly, Cord Electronics is also going to demo the new Go Figure app, which I know a lot of you Mojo Poly users have been eagerly waiting for. So make sure to stop by Cord Electronics Exhibit at CanJam New York to hear the Dave and the Mojo Poly combination with the Go Figure app. And again, also make sure to listen to the fantastic Cord Electronics Hugo 2. Lenbrook will be exhibiting at CanJam New York this year, including their two brands most popular with head fires, PSB and NAD. Both PSB and NAD have new headphones that incorporate room feel technology developed by renowned acoustics designer and founder of PSB loudspeakers, Paul Barton. Room feel is based on the following premise. Headphones should sound like a pair of flat measuring, full range loudspeakers properly set up in a good room. Paul will be discussing his research in one of the CanJam New York seminars, so check the schedule and don't miss it. This is the new PSB M4U8. The M4U8 can be used both wired and wirelessly via Bluetooth, including Aptex HD, and I'm very excited about the fact that it has Aptex HD. Now, the M4U8 has three modes of operation, passive, active, and active with active noise cancellation. It's in its active modes that room feel is optimized, and it may be in this headphone, the M4U8, and its NAD sibling, which I'll get to shortly, that room feel has sounded most natural and resolving to me. The M4U8 uses four microphones. It uses them for active noise cancellation and for phone calls, but also for a listen-through mode that you can activate to pipe in outside sound from the mics without having to remove the headphones. The NAD Viso HP70 is the PSB M4U8's fraternal twin, so they sound quite similar. Just about everything I said about the M4U8 is also true with the Viso HP70. What's the difference then? The HP70 is a bit lighter than the M4U8, and it's styled more conventionally. Anyway, make sure to visit Lenbrook's exhibit to check out their entire line, but especially to hear room feel better implemented than ever before in the PSB M4U8 and the NAD Viso HP70. At CES last month, one of my friends asked me if I'd heard the Hi-Fi Man Suzvara driven by the KN stack, specifically referring to the KN IHA6 desktop headphone amp and the KN IDAC 6 DAC. Now, I hadn't, so I was chomping at the bit to try the combo when I was back in the office. I did try it, and hello, he wasn't kidding. The combination of the Suzvara with this system is fantastic. The iDAC 6 digital to analog converter allows you to choose between transistor or vacuum tube outputs. I usually use the vacuum tube output on the iDAC 6. It also allows you to choose from several different digital filter settings. 
The IH A6 is a fully balanced headphone amp that will output up to 1100 milliwatts per channel from its single-ended outputs or up to 5000 milliwatts per channel from its balanced outputs. The IH A6 is fully discreet, it uses high-grade internal components, and it's a wonderfully refined, powerful performer. I'm surprised I don't see it talked about more in the community. KN recently sent us their new IDAP6 desktop network player. As you can see, though it can be used with other systems, it looks so dang tidy when trioed up with the IHA6 and IDAC6. The IDAP6 supports all common digital file formats across DSD and PCM. It has a slew of digital output options, including USB, I2S, AES EBU, coaxial, and optical. The KN IDAP6 supports file sharing through Ethernet or Wi Fi, and it can communicate with network devices through Samba, DLNA, and AirPlay. You can use it to access music locally from an SD card or USB storage. It can transmit or receive through dual Bluetooth 4.1 and supports Bluetooth remote control profile. It has a built-in AMOLED display and will display album art and music information. Project 86 just did a wonderful review of the KN IDAP6 on HeadFi, so look for that. At CanJam, make sure to ask KN for a demo of all the IDAP6 can do. Kane will also be bringing a new high-end amp called the HA300. The HA300 is a 300B Class A vacuum tube headphone amplifier. It's a gorgeous two-chassis design with an outboard power supply. Now, in an amp like this, the transformers contribute so much to the amp's sonic character, and KN custom built the output transformers for the HA300, and they provide three sets of impedance matched outputs for a wide headphone impedance range. The HA300 uses two 300Bs, two 6SN7s, and four 22DE4 rectifier tubes. It'll be able to output up to 5,000 milliwatts per channel into headphones and up to 8 watts per channel into speakers. The HA300 looks downright serious, and I want to hear it badly. Now, make sure to check out the IHA6, IDAC6, IDAP6 Trio, the HA300, and the rest of the KN line at their exhibit at CanJam New York. Final, formerly Final Audio Design, is going to be at CanJam New York and expect them to have their full product line there, so make sure to give their full line of in-ear and over-ear headphones a listen. Today, though, I want to focus on one new headphone model in particular, and it's this, the new Final D8000 Planar Magnetic Headphone. A lot of research and development has gone into this headphone, and I've had the great joy of being one of the beta testers, having listened to several prototypes, each one getting better and better. This is the latest prototype we evaluated, which I brought with me to the New York HeadFi meet last year, and where it went over very well. This is the production final D8000, and thinking back through the prototypes, they obviously worked hard to evolve the headphone to this production version, and it paid off. This is a spectacular headphone. Now, final is calling the D8000 an AFDS planar magnetic headphone. AFDS stands for Air Film Damping System. You can see in this very interesting exploded rendering the design and components that make up the driver assembly. Final has made significant investments in R&D, including measurements by laser Doppler device and simulation by finite element analysis, including optimization of the magnetic field by finite element method. Whatever they've done, the outcome has been outstanding. The D8000's base is round and full with excellent detail, and actually its overall signature to me is quite even-handed. The treble's smooth, but still resolving. I've been mostly driving it out of the Cord Electronics Dave DAC amp, and the music from this pairing, th this is a very special rig. Now, I've also been able to easily drive the final D8000 with my portable digital audio players. I've used the Astel and Kern A and Ultima SP1000, the Sony NWWM1Z Walkman, and the Theo X7 II. It's nice having a flat flagship full-size planar magnetic headphone with that kind of drive versatility. Now, without a doubt, the final D8000 is one of the must-hear new headphones that'll be at CanJam New York 2018, so make sure to stop by Final's exhibit to hear it, as well as the rest of Final's line. Shit Audio will be at CanJam New York, and they'll be there with their fantastically deep product line. We obviously don't have time to go over all of it, so here are a couple of recommendations to check out. One of my favorite products from Shit Audio has to be their Loki 4-band equalizer. We shot an episode of HeadFi TV last year dedicated to the Loki, so make sure to check that out. Now, the Shit Audio Loki uses a fully discrete, all bipolar, symmetrical current feedback design with no capacitors in the signal path and DC servo. For filtering, there's a capacitor gyrator for the 20 hertz control and capacitor inductor, or LC, for the other three bands. If you haven't figured it out already, this is a surprisingly sophisticated EQ for its price, and it's a joy to use. You just turn the knobs until your music sounds best to you. Shit Audio will also have the latest version of their flagship multi-bit DAC, the Yggdrasil. The Yggdrasil is one of our reference DACs here at HeadFi HQ. We actually have two original model Yggdrasils, and I love, by the way, that Shit Audio is offering an upgrade path for only $550 to update each of them to the latest version. What's changed? They're calling the upgrade the Yggdrasil Analog 2, and new production Yggdrasils shipped since October 2017 have the upgrades already, by the way. Now, Shit says the Yggdrasil Analog 2 is a thorough redefinition of the original Yggdrasil Analog output modules. They feature refined 
Class A all discrete FET buffers and numerous internal improvements. Mike Moffat of Shit Audio says the latest version offers higher current output capability and lower noise, as well as benefits that go far beyond the measurement differences. I'm already in the queue to have one of our Yggdrasils updated and I can't wait to have that done. However, given how long the line is for upgrades, my first chance to hear the updated Yggdrasil will probably be at CanJam New York. I am super excited, though, to hear an update to one of our reference DACs. Of course, Shit Audio will have the rest of its deep product line at CanJam New York, so plan on spending some serious time at their exhibit. We're thrilled that Sony will be joining us again at CanJam New York. The past few previews, we focused on Sony's phenomenal Signature Series family of audio products, which they will have for you to audition at CanJam New York. Today, though, I want to focus on a few new Sony products that you also want to be sure to audition at their exhibit. These are Sony's new wireless noise-canceling headphones. This is the Sony WH-1000XM2. This is the successor to the massively successful Sony MDR-1000X. I felt the MDR-1000X was the first headphone in the consumer active noise cancelling market to exceed the performance of the best from Bose. Improvements have been made since the MDR-1000X and new technologies have been added to this model. Now here's what I suggest you do at the show. Go to Sony's exhibit, put the WH-1000XM2 on your head, ask one of the kind Sony folks to run the ANC optimization while you have it on your head, then go wide-eyed at the level of noise being cancelled. It's that effective. There's also an in-ear counterpart to the WH-1000XM2 called the Sony WI-1000X. This is a neckband type wireless in-ear model that has pretty much all of the technology and functionality of the WH-1000XM2, including both LDAC and Aptex HD. Finally, there's the new Sony WF-1000X. This is a fully wireless model, meaning each of the earpieces is completely untethered. While it's not quite as feature-packed as the siblings I just mentioned, it still does a nice job canceling noise, and its sound signature is easily among the best of the fully wireless earphones I've heard so far. Also, while we have mentioned the Signature Series Walkman models several times before in other previews, there is a newer Walkman model you'll want to check out that's not technically a model in the Signature Series line, but it may as well be. It's called the Sony NWZX300, and it brings just about everything to the table that its Signature Series siblings do, but in a much more compact package and at a much more affordable price. It's the absolute favorite portable player of HeadFi staffer and community member Axel Chloris, and he wanted me to tell you that you should definitely audition the Sony NWZX300, as well as the rest of Sony's line at CanJam New York. In addition to the in-ear monitors covered in the individual segments throughout this preview video, there will be an abundance of other IEMs all over CanJam New York, so I wanted to cover just a few other IEM-related highlights. At CES last month, I stopped by RHA's exhibit and was excited to find that they've moved into wireless earphones. RHA's always provided such outstanding value for the prices they charge. I'm hard-pressed to think of better design and build quality at their prices. The new aluminum-bodied MA650 wireless is only $100, and it has a balanced sound signature that's quite audiophile-friendly. The new stainless steel bodied MA750 wireless is only $170 and offers a punchier, more full bodied sound than the MA650, and that sound is more to my taste when I'm on the go. Now, both the MA650 wireless and the MA750 wireless are neckband type wireless earphones. Both are IPX4 sweat and splash proof. Both also support AAC and Aptex, which is outstanding. I should also mention that the microphones for phone calls on both the MA650 wireless and the MA750 wireless are among the best mics we've used on this type of wireless earphone in terms of outgoing voice quality. Given that I'm on the phone a lot, this is a huge bonus for me. Periodic Audio will be exhibiting with their three popular IEMs, and what I love about this family of IEMs is that they're essentially exactly the same except in terms of driver diaphragm material. Now, the three models are the MG, which uses a high magnesium content magnesium aluminum alloy diaphragm that Periodic says provides well-damped extended top end. The TI uses pure titanium diaphragms that Periodic says results in low distortion, wide bandwidth, and precision in the bass frequencies. And the BE uses pure beryllium diaphragms, not beryllium coated, but solid beryllium, which Periodic says provides the widest bandwidth and lowest distortion of all metal diaphragms. Of the three, I have a strong preference for the Periodic Audio BE for its weighty, resolving sound signature. Also interesting is that the BE is one of the lowest distortion headphones we've yet measured here at HeadFi HQ. At CanJam, Periodic Audio will also be showing their new nickel portable amplifier made to be fed by your smartphone's headphone output. Shure is coming to New York, so expect to be able to hear their entire earphone line at CanJam. One of my favorites is the Shure SE846. The SE846's acoustic low-pass filter is a work of design genius. It's tiny, yet it provides four inches of high acoustic mass pathway to acoustically enable low-frequency roll-off beginning at around 75 hertz. Now, we did a HeadFi TV episode about the SE846, and this earphone still competes as strongly at its price as it did the day it was released. 
Then there's the flagship Shure KSE 1500. The KSE 1500 is a full range electrostatic in-ear monitor system. It remains the very best in-ear I've yet heard of any type at any price, universal fit or custom. We also did an entire HeadFi TV episode about the KSE 1500. Now make sure to try the KSE 1500 at CanJam with Shure's foam tips because you want to experience the natural and timberly rich and lifelike presentation the system delivers and I think it does that best with the foam tips. If there were wonders of the headphone world, the KSE 1500 would definitely be one of them. At last year's CanJam New York, a company called Blue Wave was showing a very cool prototype of their Blue Wave Get wireless hi-fi amplifier. This year they'll be showing the production version and it's very cool. Now I've included Blue Wave in this IEM segment because a lot of diehard IEM users would not consider going to a wireless earphone. But what if you could elegantly Bluetooth enable your high-end IEM with Aptex HD? The Blue Wave Get supports AAC, Aptex, Aptex HD, and EDR, enhanced data rate. It's super light and compact. It has this nice reversible clip. It has controls for play, pause, answer, call, and skip forward and back. And for calls, it also has a built-in MEMS microphone. Of course, you can also use it to wireless enable your home audio system in a pinch. Make sure to check out the Blue Wave Get at Blue Wave's exhibit. Last year at one of the audio shows, Cesar from ClearTune Monitors, CTM, let me hear a prototype IEM. That unit was a prototype of one of two models they just announced, and it was very impressive. The two new models they just announced are from a new line of IEMs called the DaVinci Series. There's the DaVinci Series 9, which has nine drivers, and the DaVinci Series 10, which has ten drivers. Honestly, I can't remember which of the two prototypes I heard, but it was very good. CTM's best work so far. Now, ClearTune monitors will be debuting the DaVinci Series IEMs at CanJam New York, and I fully intend to audition these new models with a top-notch portable digital audio player. Empire Ears will be showing for the first time on this side of the world two new lines of IEMs with seven new models. The two new lines are the EP line and the X series. The EP line will consist of three multiple balanced armature IEMs. The X series line will have four dynamic BA hybrid IEMs. Now I believe at least two new models from the line, the Phantom and the Legend X will be shown at CanJam New York. We just received the Phantom and Legend X today on our last day of shooting, so I've only had a chance to briefly listen, but first impressions for both are excellent so far. The bass on the Legend X, though. I typically like my bass north of neutral, and the Legend X was downright physical at times. What they've got going on up in there, I do not know, but I have to spend more time with this one. Now make sure to listen to the entire Empire Ears line, and definitely give these two new models, the Phantom and the Legend X, some serious attention. Effect Audio has been a very respected audio cable maker in what are perhaps the most sophisticated, most discerning portable audio markets in Asia. They're probably best known for their IEM cables. Now, some of the most respected in-ear monitor makers offer Effect Audio cables directly and show their products at shows equipped with Effect Audio's cables. For example, when Empire Ears shipped us their Phantom and Legend X IEMs, both were furnished with Effect Audio's Ares cables. I use Effect Audio's Linehart IEM cable on my Noble Audio Prestige and the Effect Audio Thor Silver 2 Plus and Eros 2 Plus with some of our full-size headphones. I'm glad to see Effect Audio continue to successfully expand their presence outside of Asia. So make sure to check out Effect Audio's exhibit. Make sure to bring your headphones or IEMs. You want to try out their cables. At CES last month, I met Helmets Bems and Yanis Spogus of Sonarworks, and they gave me a demonstration of their Sonarworks TrueFi desktop app, which is a very fascinating piece of software. Now, the aim of Sonarworks TrueFi is to achieve what Sonarworks calls studio reference sound and to do it with your headphones. The premise is that all headphones color sound. Sonarworks has measured well over 100 headphones to determine how different headphone models change the sound. TrueFi then applies smart sound filters to remove that coloration, to remove the effect of your headphones to reach this studio reference sound target. In the demo they gave me at CES, they brought some very modest, okay, let's just say it, not very good headphones to demo with. They also brought a Sennheiser HD650, which is, of course, a fantastic headphone. What was amazing was the worse the headphone, the more spectacular the effects of TrueFi. It could bring some pretty dismal sounding headphones into very listenable tunings. Switching back and forth between TrueFi on and TrueFi off was almost mind boggling with these headphones. I couldn't believe how different, how much better those headphones could sound. Now with the HD650, the effect was much more modest. I'm assuming the HD650 is much closer to their target then, and so the changes necessary to bring it in line were comparatively much more minor to bring about. I was a bit surprised to find that my beloved old Sony MDR7506 is one headphone that actually benefits significantly from Sonarworks TrueFi. It's going to be hard for me to listen to this headphone without it from now on. Now, I only just bought a license for TrueFi, so it's early days for me with it. Again, they've measured and built profiles for 112 headphones, and I believe they're targeting 200 total headphones profiled by the end of this year. We have a good number of the headphone models that they've calibrated for here at the office, so I can't wait to run more and more of them through TrueFi. 
Make sure to demo SonarWorks TruFi at CanJam New York because it's a seriously impressive demo. Focal will be at CanJam New York and given that they're crafting some of the very best engineered electrodynamic headphones the world has yet seen and heard, their exhibit is a definite must stop. Now last fall we did a dedicated HeadFi TV episode about the new Focal Clear, the latest in the flagship family of Focal headphones that also includes the Elear and the Utopia. Now the Focal Clear uses the same aluminum magnesium alloy M-shaped dome diaphragm as the Elear, but with an updated voice coil that improves control of the driver. This results in improved treble extension by pushing driver brake up even further from the audio band. It also extends the deep bass extension even lower and flatter. Now in terms of tonal balance, the Focal Clear is slotted just about perfectly between the Elear and Utopia, and to my ears it has the most linear tonal balance of the three. It's no wonder the Focal Clear is fast becoming one of the best reviewed headphones we've seen in this community in some time. Of course, in addition to the Clear, Focal will also have its other headphones, like the other flagships we just mentioned, the Elear and the Utopia, both of which we also did a dedicated HeadFi TV episode for in the past, as well as its more affordable Focal Listen, Listen Wireless, and the just-announced Listen Professional, the latter of which I haven't yet heard, so I am looking forward to hearing that at CanJam New York. Fire Electric will be at CanJam New York, and because I have so little experience with their amplifiers, I'm very excited to hear their current line, and especially their V281 balanced headphone amplifier. However, I was particularly excited when Ultrasone CEO Michael Zirkel told me the other day that Bioelectric would also be showing at their exhibit the new Ultrasone Edition 15 headphone. Why am I excited? Well, I first heard the Ultrasone Edition 15 at last fall's Fujia Abic Tokyo Headphone Festival and I instantly fell in love. The Edition 15 is easily my favorite headphone Ultrasone has yet released and easily one of my favorite new high-end headphones of the past year. It's like their S-Logic EX platform was just waiting for this newly designed open back chassis. Maybe it's the new velour ear pads too because I tried the leather ones on it in Japan and there was no doubt the velour was where it was at. Since it arrived at HeadFi HQ, the Ultrasone Edition 15 has become one of the headphones the three of us here at the office take frequent turns sharing. I love its tonal balance, rich bass, warm but articulate mids, and detailed treble. But what draws me in the most is no doubt the imaging. I feel like with this headphone, Ultrasone has finally, fully realized the imaging they intended with their various S-Logic platforms over the years. For me, the imaging is wide, with outstanding layering. It's three-dimensional, it's airy, without being diffuse. I think they're only making 999 of these Edition 15s, and I wouldn't be at all surprised to see this model eventually go down as a classic. Make sure to stop by the Bioelectric exhibit and listen to their amps driving the absolutely splendid Ultrasone Edition 15. One More will be at CanJam New York, and they'll be showing their new One More triple driver over-ear headphone. As the name suggests, there are three drivers per side in this headphone. This is rather unusual for an over-ear type headphone. One More describes the driver complement as one 40mm graphene dynamic driver, one ceramic tweeter, and one bass reflector per side. The bass reflector is, I believe, another name for a passive radiator which can be used to extend bass response. The One More triple driver over-ears chassis is aluminum alloy in a titanium color. The headband has leather padding and the ear pads are also leather. It also feels very well constructed overall. This is not surprising coming from One More. I think I should point out that though there is a grill, this is a closed back headphone. The headphone was tuned by Grammy-winning sound engineer Luca Bignardi, and he's done a wonderful job to my ears. This headphone has a clearly bass-emphasized sound signature, but is otherwise surprisingly balanced. For a smaller closed-back over-ear, it also images well. Now, without prior knowledge that this was a multi-driver design, I wouldn't have guessed it, so one more's engineers have integrated the drivers very nicely. Now, the triple driver over-ear is easily driven by my iPhone, but it does scale rather well with higher-end digital audio players. I definitely recommend you audition the One More triple driver over-ear, as well as One More's broad family of in-ear monitors and wireless headphones at CanJam New York. Stax and Woo Audio are exhibiting in their own dedicated room called the Plymouth Room, which runs alongside the main Broadway exhibit area. This should provide a nice environment in which to hear what Stax's electrostatic headphones can do, and Stax will be showing some new products. This one here is one I'm super excited about. This is the Stax SRM-D10 driver unit. The Stax SRM-D10 is a rechargeable, battery-powered, portable electrostatic DAC amp combo. The SRM-D10's DAC will support DSD up to 5.6 MHz and PCM up to 24384. The SRM-D10's electrostatic amp section is Stax Pro Bias only, so you can drive any Stax Pro Bias headphone up to and including their flagship SR009, though I do believe they're thinking most will use it with the SRL300 or the SRL500. Maximum output voltage is 200 volts RMS. This SRM-D10 is an amazing little piece of kit. I was so excited and a bit surprised to see this one from Stax. Stax will also be showing two other new products celebrating Stax's 80th anniversary. One is the Stax SRM353XBK driver unit, which is a limited edition black version of the SRM353X driver unit. I believe only 300 units of the SRM353XBK will be sold. 
The other is the Stax SRL 300 Limited with the gold Stax nameplate. There will only be 800 of these limited edition SRL 300s sold. Wu Audio will be showing their entire lineup, but consistent with the electrostatic celebration in the Plymouth room, they will be showing for the first time their new ultra high-end flagship electrostatic headphone amplifier. It's called the Wu Audio 3ES, and all I have for you are these photos and the pricing. The standard model Wu Audio 3ES will be priced at $8,999. The Elite Edition will be priced at $15,999. Again, I have no specific details about the amp or its design yet, but you can bet I'll be swapping some Staxes around on one of these to hear what it can do. I can tell from the photos this thing is huge. Wu sent me photos of the 3ES next to the huge Wu Audio WA33, and the 3ES was substantially larger. I'm a big fan of Wu's amps. We have a few of them here at the office. I have high hopes and high expectations for this Wu Audio 3ES. I also found out Wu Audio will have the MySphere headphones at their exhibit, which I'm very excited about because the men behind MySphere, they're the minds behind the legendary AKG K1000, Heinz Renner and Helmut Ryback. The MySphere is a sort of reimagination of the ideas and inspiration that sprung the AKG K1000. I had a brief demo of the MySphere at RMAF last fall. The imaging was phenomenal. It takes some adjusting to get the headphone and your head dialed into the sweet spot, but once you do, for me, that image, it was out front and really airy. Anyway, make sure to stop by the Plymouth Room to check out Stax's entire line of electrostatic headphones and amps, and also to check out Wu Audio's entire line of tube amps and the MySphere headphones. Klipsch will be at CanJam New York, and they'll be showing their new premium semi-open over-ear headphone, the Klipsch Heritage HP3. As you can see, the Heritage HP3 is stunning looking, and it also seems very sturdily built. It's constructed with stamped steel, machined aluminum, solid wood, and genuine sheepskin. I also love the cables. The industrial, vintage-looking cloth sheathing harks back to an era many decades in the past. Very, very charming. The HP3's 52mm biocellulose drivers were custom developed by Foster of Japan and Klipsch's collaboration with Foster has paid off handsomely. The imaging is airy and it has a sound signature that I'd call audiophile fun. Solid and grounded with its rich but controlled bass and a sparkle thankfully shy of bright. Now while it's a fun sonic signature, the Klipsch Heritage HP3 is still articulate and smooth and I really enjoy listening to it. Klipsch will also be showing their new DAC headphone amp that's called simply the Klipsch Heritage Headphone Amplifier. The headphone amplifier's DAC section will decode PCM up to 24192 and DSD up to 11.2 MHz. Its amp section is dual class AB with outputs for both unbalanced and balanced drive, and it can drive up to 1440 milliwatts into 32 ohms. In terms of build quality materials and styling, the headphone amplifier is rather like the Heritage HP3 with a lot of wood with metal hardware, including these weighted old-fashioned long throw switches and knobs. Definitely make sure to stop by Klipsch's exhibit at CanJam New York to hear the Heritage HP3 and the Heritage headphone amplifier. At CanJam New York, Biodynamic is going to be showing a new headphone that I only got to see at CES last month but didn't get to hear. It's going to be their new flagship wireless headphone and it's called the Amaron Wireless. Now I'm told the Amaron Wireless uses the same Tesla drivers as the Amaron Home. Now as Biodynamic headphones go, like the Amaron Home, I'm told it has a similarly warm sound signature with a detailed top end and a smooth mid band. They won't sound exactly the same though. The Amaron Wireless is a closed back headphone so there will be some differences in sound between it and the wired open open back Amaron Home. The Amaron Wireless is equipped with Aptex HD for higher resolution Bluetooth and has a USB-C port for charging and firmware updates. It also has touch controls. Now while it's going to be rated for around 20 hours of battery life per charge, I'm told that's very conservative and 30 isn't out of the question. Now if Biodynamics CES exhibit was any indication, along with the Amaron Wireless, they'll be heavily featuring their new MIY app, MIY standing for Make It Yours. MIY uses technology from a fellow German company Biodynamic partnered with called Mimi Hearing Technologies. Now, Using the MIY app, you enter your age and take a hearing test, and from there your sound profile is created. That sound profile is uploaded to your Amaron Wireless, and I believe you can then take that profile with you no matter which device you're using with the Amaron Wireless. As I understand it, the adjustments that are made are not only in the frequency domain, but also the time domain. I'm told it's kind of remodeling the processes in the human cochlea. Now, as we talk more and more about audio measurements at HeadFi, this topic, this discussion of time domain and not just frequency domain, not to mention the discussion of psychoacoustics, this will only get more and more interesting over time. I think this is a very exciting frontier, and I'm very excited about Biodynamics' work here. I've been having some interesting discussions with Mario Gebhardt from Biodynamic these past couple of years. Also, the Amaron Wireless isn't the only biodynamic model for which this type of personalization is possible. This is also available with two of their other new advanced Tesla wireless models that will also be at CanJam New York. I'm talking about the more portable Aventa Wireless on-the-ear headphone and the Zalento Wireless Universal Fit in-ear monitors. 
With these Tesla wireless headphones, Biodynamic is obviously pursuing advanced DSP and personalization. However, at any time, if you want to use them as traditional high-end headphones, keep in mind that Biodynamic tunes these models 100% acoustically, not using DSP. The DSP doesn't kick in until you activate it. So that means if you listen to them in wired mode or in wireless mode without DSP activated, you should get similar or identical sound. Now, in my opinion, that's a great way to go about developing these kinds of headphones. Of course, do not forget that Biodynamic will also have their outstanding, more traditional lineup of headphones. Another new one to check out in that vein is the new Biodynamic DT240 Pro. This is a $99 closed-back studio monitor from Biodynamic, and it's a fantastic value. Audio-Technica wowed us last year with these two wireless models, which were the first two Aptex HD headphones to arrive here. This is the ATH DSR 7BT and the ATH DSR 9BT. Both use Audio-Technica's pure digital drive system, which bypasses the need for standard digital to analog conversion. It's actually a really neat technology. The ATH DSR 9BT remains the most wired audiophile sounding Bluetooth over-ear headphone I've yet heard. At CanJam New York, Audio-Technica is going to be showing a new wireless neckband type in-ear counterpart to the ATH DSR 7BT and ATH DSR 9BT, and it's called the ATH DSR 5BT. The new ATH DSR 5BT also uses the Pure Digital Drive system, and it's also equipped with support for Aptex HD. Now, the ATH DSR 5BT has what Audio-Technica describes as dual-phase push-pull drivers of different diameters, 9.8 millimeters and 8.8 millimeters. Audio Technical will also be showing its new flagship over ear headphone, the ATH ADX 5000. We had an ATH ADX 5000 here for a little while and it sounded excellent. It had a signature I described as very resolving, incisive, yet smooth. And while it doesn't necessarily sound like the flagship electrostatic Stax SR009, that's the sort of description that I'd also give that headphone. Anyway, the ATH ADX 5000's large 58mm electrodynamic drivers used tungsten coated diaphragms. It felt super light and comfortable on the head and it sounded like a solid Audio-Technica flagship. This is a headphone I very much want to spend more time with again. Make sure to visit Audio-Technica's exhibit at CanJam New York to listen to the new ATH DSR 5BT, the flagship ATH ADX 5000, and the rest of Audio-Technica's line. At CanJam New York, ZMF headphones will be showing their latest models, including the Atticus and the Icon, both of which are all original ZMF dynamic headphones. We have the Icon here at HeadFi HQ with its biocellulose diaphragm drivers, and I think this is an all-original biocellulose driver, by the way, as I haven't seen it in any other headphone. Anyway, the Icon sound is probably the most linear I've heard from ZMF, but with impactful extended bass that I love and would expect from ZMF. ZMF Headphones is also showing their new Auteur models, their open-back flagship models, and I still haven't had a chance to spend much time with these ones. But take a look at this photo. Is there a better looking, more unique grill on a headphone than on these Auteurs? I can't think of one off the top of my head. What little time I have spent with the Auteurs did impress me, so I want to spend more time at CanJam New York with them to get more acquainted with what open back sounds like from ZMF. Anyway, make sure to visit ZMF Headphones Exhibit to hear the Atticus, Icon, the Auteur, and also ZMF's planar magnetic headphone models at CanJam New York. Despite all we've just gone over, this is still just a fraction of what you'll be able to hear and see at CanJam New York this year. Again, CanJam New York is happening February 17th and 18th, 2018 at the New York Marriott Marquis Hotel. Of course, we didn't have time to cover every exhibitor, so scrolling on your screen right now is a list of all the companies who will be exhibiting at CanJam New York 2018. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in New York, and we'll see you on the forums at headfi.org.